Welcome to the slider crank forward dynamics uh, video. So here's a slider crank and the interesting thing that forward dynamics lets us do is drive this slider crank with a torque and we'll see how fast it ends up spinning. Uh, here we want to have a little bit of friction in the slot. Coulomb friction. Coulomb friction is mu n friction. So we'll say f frick is going to be mu times the normal force and it's going to be opposing the motion. So if the velocity of the slider is positive to the right, we would expect that friction force to be positive to the left. Now the viscous pin friction, viscous friction is going to give us a friction torque, T frick, which is going to be B times omega rel, the relative angular velocity of the joint. And how we define that is uh, going to be important and in both cases these friction forces are opposing the motion. All right, what else do we need here? Uh, so the first thing we should do is draw a schematic showing where the stiff springs would go. So we'll put stiff springs at A and B. Uh, we'll also put stiff springs in the pin at C. It turns out we can get away without putting stiff springs between the slider and the base. So let's come down here and I'll draw I'll draw a base point A1 which will be basically my origin. So X and Y absolute coordinates start at A1. Uh, the first link we'll draw that with points A2, G2, and B2. Here's angle theta 2. And here are our stiff springs. Now we'll assume that there's damping in parallel even though I won't show the little dampers. So KSA and RSA will be the spring stiffnesses, same stiffness for X and Y. Uh, let's see. Now uh, between points B on links 2 and 3 we will need some stiff springs. So I'll draw link 3, whoops, I'll draw link 3 approximately as it looks in the original schematic. So here's B2, here's B3, here's some stiff springs and dampers in parallel, KSB and RSB. Angle theta 3 will define the same way we did when we did loop analysis. So there's theta 3. And now let's see. Point G3 and pin point C3. Now C3, that should be in the middle of the block. And the block should be on the ground. So let's see. Maybe the best way to do this is to just have our block on the ground like that and I'm going to put a stiff spring in there. Well, it is a pin joint so I'm going to have two components of the force. Let's see which way is the best way to do that. Um, I'll call this point G, point C4 which is coincident with the center of gravity of the block. Okay, so I've got C3 on link 3, I've got C4 there. I'll put a couple of stiff springs in there. So these will be K stiff at C <coughs> and damping at C. Alright, and I'll assume that the block always stays on the sliding surface. Alright, so that should be fine. Now, uh, free body diagrams. Okay, so first I'll do an FBD of the crank, which will be link 2. So this, a lot of the stuff in this will look familiar. Um, if A2 moves away from A1 as shown, the spring force on A2 is going to pull down and to the left. So to be compatible with that, I'll define F12Y and F12X like that. Uh, I'm going to put in 
my driving torque T. Uh, let's see. If B3 moves away from B2, as shown in the figure on the left, then the, the spring force on B2 is going to be to the right and upward, which gives me F32Y and F32X up and to the right. I've got a gravity force, G2. This will be M2G. I should label my points A2 and B2. Now I've got friction torque. The friction torque is B times the relative velocity of the joint. Uh, at A, I'm going to join. I'm going to define the friction torque at A as B times omega two. That means if omega two is positive, in other words, counterclockwise rotation, then I'm going to get a friction force that's going to tend to the the friction torque of A2 on the base is going to be counterclockwise if link 2 is rotating counterclockwise. So the reaction torque on link 2 is going to be equal and opposite. So there's T frick A. So just to try to restate that, if omega 2 is rotating counterclockwise, the friction in the pin is going to cause a drag torque opposing that motion. So here's T frick A. Now I want to define the friction torque T frick B. I'm going to make the arbitrary decision to define that as B times I need the relative joint velocity, so omega 3 minus omega 2. Now if omega 3 is greater than omega 2, I'll get a positive T frick B. So here's link 2. If I imagine link 3 up here and rotating faster than link 2, that's going to put a drag torque on link 2 that way. And that's what I'm concerned about here. This is a free body diagram of link 2, so I need T frick on link 2. So here are the, that's all the forces and torques on link 2. Okay, now when I go down to the FBD of link 3, the connecting rod, I'll draw it as shown in the figure. Alright, so there's that. I will put my points B3 and C3 on the diagram along with G3. I'll add the gravity vector. I'm going to put an equal and opposite T frick B. I just drew T frick B on link 2. I'll draw it equal and opposite for link 2 on 3. So there's T frick B. I'm going to draw equal and opposite pin forces F 3 2 X and F 3 2 Y. So F 3 2 Y is downward, F 3 2 X is to the left, and that'll be the direction of the spring forces of 2 on 3 if the springs are deformed as shown in my schematic. Now down there at pin C, uh, the spring forces I'm going to get are F, we we'll call that F43X, and it looks like the spring that I've drawn will pull down with F43Y. All right. Now there's um, viscous pin friction at pin C as well. And I'm going to define uh, T frick C as B omega 3. Now this one's a little harder to visualize. If you imagine link 3 rotating counterclockwise, it's going to put a drag torque on the block that's going to be that way. And then the reaction torque back on link 3 is going to look like that. Maybe that'll be clearer when we draw the uh, free body diagram of the slider block. All right. In any event, there's the complete free body diagram of link 3. Finally down here, 
I will draw the free body diagram of the slider, which will consist of, I'm going to have an equal and opposite F43Y, an equal and opposite F43X. I'm going to have a normal force between the slot and the slider, which I'll call F14Y, which is basically N. Uh, what else do I have? I have a weight force, M4G. Now, before I mentioned uh, that friction torque at C, if this is link 3 and it's rotating with a positive omega 3 that way, it's going to cause a friction torque, T frick C, on the block that way. And if I go over to the link, I see the equal and opposite friction torque of the block on link 3. I'm not going to keep that friction torque around on my slider free body diagram because I'm not going to consider the rotational dynamics of the block. So here's point C4. Okay. So now I've got everything I need to write my equations. I've got everything I need to express my pin forces as a function of my state variables. Uh, let's see. If I assume that the block is always on the surface, then I'm going to assume that there's no acceleration of the block. So I'm going to write a static equation relating F43Y, F14Y, and the gravity force. F43Y will be a force from one of my parasitic springs. As for the friction force F frick, which is this Coulomb mu n friction force, that's going to be mu times the magnitude of F14Y. Now, the block could be sliding to the left or the right. And in either case, F14Y could be positive. It could be that F14Y is downward or negative. So to establish the friction force, the safest thing for me to do is say the magnitude of the friction force is mu times the magnitude of the normal force. Now how do I switch the direction of that when the block goes from right to left or left to right? Suppose I do this. Suppose I say friction force is mu times F14Y times velocity of g4 in the x direction. And once again, re recall that c4 and g4 are the same point at the middle of the block. If I take vg4x and divide it by its magnitude, what does that do? Well, if the block's going to the right, then vg4x is positive, and this thing in the brackets equals 1. If the block is going to the left, then VG4X is negative, and when I divide it by its magnitude, I get negative 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on my free body diagram F friction. I'm going to draw it to the left. I'm just going to move a few of these labels around. Clean this up a bit. I'll draw F frick right there. I'll indicate that this is point C4 and g4. Uh, so if my velocity is positive to the right, then I should get a friction force that's positive to the left. Okay, so that's how I define the friction force. The other way I can express that is mu times the absolute value of F14Y times the signum function of VG4X. Now that signum function that's a function that's actually in MATLAB. I forget if it's SGN or SIGN. Anyway, the signum function of x, it returns 1 if x is greater than 0, or minus 1 if x is less than 0. So that should work in theory. In practice, it doesn't work. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the following video. So the following video, part 2, We'll take those free body diagrams and we will write Newton's laws and we'll at least partially express those constraint forces
in terms of the state variables. So the final thing I'll write here right now is I'll write down what our state variables will be for the forward dynamic simulation. Our state variables. In general, that's x vector. We're going to have x g2, y g2, velocity of g2 in the x direction, velocity of g2 in the y direction. We're going to have theta2 and omega2. Those are the six state variables that come from my first rigid link. We're going to have x g3, y g3, and the x and y velocities of point g3, v g3 x, v g3 y. Uh, we're also going to have theta3 and omega3. So that's six state variables for the second rigid body. And then for the slider, we're only going to consider motion in the x direction. So x g4 and v g4 x. So there's my state vector. It's got 14 elements in it. And in the following video, we'll write the uh, expressions for the derivatives of those state variables, which will include the constraint forces expressed in terms of those state variables.